It is a cold morning. I do not function well in the cold, you know that, but hey, we're going to do just fine. This week has been a week full of victories. This week has been a week full of heartaches in our household. But God reminded me of a song early in the week before anything happened. And it was a song that we used to sing on my school bus of all places. We had, I had an hour drive home on the school bus. And it was a Christian school. And for some reason, every single day, we sang a song. And the chorus said, it's a very short song. All it says is, in everything, give him praise. In the good times, praise his name. In the bad times, do the same. In everything, give the king of kings all the praise. And I thought, you know, God, that's kind of weird that you remind me of this. I mean, I've been out of school for, yeah, those many years. Okay, quite a few years. And um, I thought, well, all right, fine. Tuesday, Hanika calls us. She is all excited. She had a fantastic day. Everything was perfect. She got high critique marks from her teachers. They said, you are a jumper. You are amazing. You can do things that most girls can't do. And we're like, praise God, this is a start. In fact, one of her teachers said, we need to find you a professional job. Praise God, that's what she's there for. This is it. We're on the right track. This is it. Woo, here we go. Then she gets a phone call. Her church that she goes to, guess what? We have decided to bring you on. You have been faithful. You have proven yourself. We're going to bring you on the broadcast team. Now, this is a church of thousands, okay? This is a huge church. We have decided to bring you on the broadcast team. We're going to teach you how to use the camera. We're going to put you back in the sound room. We're going to teach you how to do lyrics and how to do different things with all. There's five different things, five, right? Five different things that we're going to teach you how to do. She was just soaring. Perfect day. It was like, oh my goodness, all these things. In the good times, praise his name. So then she goes to her church cohort that night. They have a weekly cohort, a bi-weekly cohort. So she goes to a cohort, and there was a whole bunch of new people because everybody was just returning from Christmas break. And, and everybody there is a college student except for her. All right? And so they're like, well, we have so many new faces tonight. Let's go ahead and introduce everybody and tell them what school you go to. So they're going through. They're going through. I go to Vanderbilt. I go to this college. I go to this college. I'm studying this. I'm studying that. And Annika's just like, oh. You know, she's always been kind of quiet and hidden and in the back. And she's just like, you know what? I'm going for it. She says, I attend Nashville Ballet, and I am training to be a professional ballerina. The guy next to her stopped and goes, hold it, everybody, this is the coolest person in the room. <laughs> so the one thing that she had been hiding all this time was her greatest asset. In the good times, praise his name. After the cohort is over, a lady walked up to her and started talking to her. I talked to her for a long time, and really, they became really good friends. And the lady says, you know what? I own a coffee shop. I like your personality. I want you to come work for me at the coffee shop. In the good times, praise his name, because she's been looking for a job. Last night, we're sitting in a restaurant, and all of a sudden, my husband looks down, and he says, it's Nashville Ballet. Why are they calling us? So he gets on the phone, and they say, Annika has been injured. We think she's broken her ankle or her foot. You need to come pick her up. He's like, um, I'm in Florida? <laughs> Even if I leave now, I can't make it in time. So they, they, you know, she was upset. She was crying. She was in the bathroom. They finally got her. Somebody, one of the families, took her home. It's swollen. It's black and blue. It's all nasty. But we're believing God for a miracle. But you know what? Even in the bad times, praise his name. So what are we going to do? We're going to praise his name. Life is not perfect. The Bible says that it is going to rain on the just and the unjust. 
Yes, God gave lots of miracles to Annika, lots of blessings to Annika. But then the Satan comes in and he tries to take it away. But you know what? We're going to stop him under our feet. We're going to praise his name. We're going to believe for a miracle. So right now, I want to say, God, we praise your name. No matter what everybody is going through in here, no matter what problems they're facing and they are coming against, God, we praise your name. We believe in you, God. We believe that you are going to take care of these things, that we do not need to worry about them. We do not need to worry about tomorrow, for God, you are there, and you have already taken care of everything that we may be worried about. God, we praise your name. Thank you, Father. Uh, she about stole my mic. Uh, <laughs> run away from me. Well, I'll tell you what, it is good to praise him. Amen. And even when you don't feel like it, praise him. And whenever you feel like it, praise him. And uh, if you don't know what else to do and you got nothing else to do, Praise Him. There you go. And God will move in the hearts and lives of everyone. And so it is good to see there's more people coming in that are coming online. we got a good host of uh, people that are in here. And if you're a guest with us, please feel free to register online. And if we need to throw a uh, moment up or a link up for that to make that become that a reality, they'll do that in a moment here for you. But uh, please let us know that you're here with us. And we thank you so much for being a part of our service here this morning. Well, let me go back to my notes here real quick. And go ahead and dismiss the kids and head on back to Kids Church. God bless you so much. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Have a good time back there. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to our morning announcements here very quickly here in just a moment. I want us to take the opportunity to be a part of whatever God is doing. And especially here, we have the opportunity to be able to affect change in people's lives for the glory of God. And I want all of us to be a part of what God is doing. So first of all, Upper Zoom, this Wednesday, Book of Isaiah, going to be a great, great study that we're going to have here together as we're in chapter 44, 45, we're in the 40s somewhere. Anyhow, we're learning a lot lot about life. We're learning a lot about ourselves, and you are more than welcome to join. You just jump in any time. Like, well, I missed the first 40 chapters. It's okay. You will get something out of it. You can do this in-house or online. The Voltage Youth Growth Track, also 6.30 p.m. They're going to be meeting here. All of our youth that, are, that uh, are in middle school, high school are welcome to attend a part of that discipleship. We're continuing the Freedom Class on Sundays at 9.15 a.m. Looking forward for you to be a part of that. We had a real Really, really good discussion today about dealing with your anger. I know nobody in here has any anger problems and nobody online. I know I'm preaching. Not, I know. Never mind. I'll move on. And then we're going to conclude our series today, Not For Sale. This is going to bring this particular series to a close, and I've enjoyed it very, very much. There's a lot of stuff that has come out of this I'm looking forward to sharing with you for the rest. And some of it's going to be showing up for the rest of the year. This has really been a keynote series for me and for Faith Family Worship Center. Next month, in Jesus' name is going to be. So what are we going to be preaching about? What do we do in Jesus' name? What does it mean when we pray in Jesus' name? What does Jesus' name mean to you and to me? And this is obviously the month of February, and you say, well, it's the month of love and relationships. Well, how does that all work in Jesus' name? So don't miss out upon that. Tonight, Youth Ministries, 5 p.m., Game and Pizza, Pizza and games. You got to be. You got to be in high school, young adults. You know, just out of high school and the middle schoolers. Just get that. Because some of you are looking at me like pizza. No, no, not you. You're not coming. The uh, uh, we'll find another pizza party for you later. Um, but uh, and besides, some of those games might break a hip. So we don't want to go there. So next Sunday is a big deal. Next Sunday is a big deal. That's all I'm going to say about it. You need to be here. All right? If you can't make it online, you need to be here. If you get here online, but you need to be here because next Sunday is a big deal. Did I happen to mention that next Sunday is a big deal? Did, 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 did I say, okay, just, I just checking, Greg. I just, nobody said anything. I just wanted to make sure. It's a big deal. What is it? It's a big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. All right, so don't miss out on next Sunday. And then the 13th of February is Super Bowl Sunday. You say, oh, you can't say Super Bowl. Well, they haven't sued anybody in a long time, so we're going to say it. The, uh, and all the 
Chris. Uh, but uh, we're going to be down to Shark Shack, Ice Cream Shark Shack here in Palm City. Uh, the one in Palm City, not the other one. Uh, oh, there's another one. Hmm. And uh, here in Palm City, and uh, we're going to be putting up the big screen, and we're going to put up the big sound system, and we're going to pray for much warmer weather than this. Somebody say amen, and we'll see today. We're going to learn today who's going to be playing. So... All of my teams are gone. I don't care anymore. But hey, we're going to uh, we're going to go ahead and enjoy it anyhow. It's an opportunity for you to come out and hang out with us and minister to other people. That's what it's all about. We're there. We start discussions and conversations with people all over the place, and they turn into opportunities to be able to extend the grace and the mercy and the love of Jesus Christ to others who normally would never receive it, just standing around a big video screen out there in the middle of a parking lot in the middle of nowhere. So Christ is our heart, and people are our passion. Anybody ever pick up on that? I think we've said that once or twice before. I want to make sure you understand that. This week, I, in, my, in my social feed, for some reason, I saw a lot about racial reconciliation. It's a big deal in our culture today. We talk about race. We talk about this stuff all the time. And as usual, most solutions excluded Christ as part of the solution. Most of them didn't talk about Jesus. They didn't include Jesus. didn't talk about faith or anything else. Now, I've been talking about your community of faith here for the last month, and I'm going to continue to talk about your community of faith probably till, till I, I never. I'm going to continue to talk about your community of faith because you have a community of faith. There are a group of people that look to you as their, for their spiritual guidance and leadership in their life, and I want you to be successful at that. I want you to be good at it, but I want you to see how Jesus did it. If you want to know how to have a community of faith that changes people's lives, do what Jesus did, and you'll get the results that Jesus got. How many of you ever figured that out? How many successful people in here have ever figured out if you do what successful people do, you will get what successful people get? It's not hard, and, um, um, and, and you're thinking, well, isn't that cheating? I, I don't know, but I just like doing great things that changes people's lives for the cause of Christ and to build the kingdom of God and see lives change and marriages healed and people's lives turned around. That's a great thing to happen. Now, when we look at Jesus' community, he included everybody, everyone, rich or poor, saint or sinner, the best to the worst. It did not matter. He included them, and especially he included people of different tribes and tongues or races, as we would say today in, in our culture, and that was a radical idea. Oh, that was a huge radical idea to the religious lot and even to the people of that day because it was just normal for everybody to hate everybody else. I don't know, deja vu, are we back there again, right? He welcomed anybody who came looking for him. Get this. He welcomed anybody who came looking for him. If you want a strong community of faith around you, welcome anybody that comes looking for you. Welcome them into your presence and allow the Holy Spirit to use you to change their lives. A generous heart is revealed with an open hand. A generous heart is always revealed with an open hand. Again, let's look at Jesus. Jesus broke bread and he gave. Jesus laid hands on people and they were healed. Jesus opened the scriptures and he taught from them. Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, amen, and then eventually, Jesus stretched out his hands and let them be nailed to a cross. He never raised his fist against those who were persecuting and murdering him unjustifi unjustifiably. Your tithe, your offering, your faith, your hands, your skills, everything is, 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 is in the hands of a world is bent upon isolation, division, and destruction. Everything that God gives you, the world wants you to use to destroy everything else around it. Let your faith shine today. Let it make a difference. Let it be inclusive of people who need Jesus the most. And you know somebody. You don't have to reach everybody. That's God. God's all-knowing, all all-powerful. Amen. 
but you can reach somebody today with what you do. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your tithe. Thank you for your giving. God is blessing, and we're going to see. And you say, well, you know, what's going on? I don't know. Maybe next Sunday you want to come to, to church next Sunday because next Sunday's a big deal. Yeah. And you'll find out what God is doing. Father, I thank you for what you've done for your many blessings. I pray that you continue to bless the tither, the giver, everybody online, in-house, wherever. Lord, I pray that you will continue, continue. Lord, you are faithful to us. Now we will prove our faithfulness to you by giving to your house and supporting your work in your kingdom in this hour. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said... Let um, me remind you, our new online giving system is up and running and doing very, very well. Um, we I haven't had too many complaints about it. In fact, it was, most of what I've heard was, it, that's it? It's, it's this easy? Yeah. You were looking for something more complicated? I get that. Uh, but it was, it was that easy. And then next Sunday, I'm going to answer this question during our giving time. What is money? I'm going to I'm going to be I'm going to focus in the, on on the month of, of of February about giving and money and all the rest of that. What is money? What is it really? You got, I know what the world says, but what does God say? So we're going to be looking forward to that. Amen. Go to Matthew chapter 6, 9 through 13. U version, for those of you who have the U version app, you can look us up any events and you'll find my notes there, or abbreviated version of the notes, but a pretty good set anyway. And also there's a number of links in there for other things that I don't talk about here during service, so you'll be able to connect to us on Facebook, online, and different places like that. Today's also Communion Sunday, and so for those of you online, you may want to, if you have communion emblems and you want to celebrate with us at the end of the service, you're more than welcome to do so for everyone here. We welcome you to be a part of communion. And those of you online, I know some people think, well, you got to be a member of the church. And I know some churches are there that way. You got to be a member of the church or this or that before you can receive communion. No, it's open. We just ask that you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior in order to celebrate the Lord's Supper with us. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. So we bring not for sale to a close. The vision for this series was to bring you closer to Christ in 2022, and, and, and this vision is far from over. Uh, in fact, we are just going, we're going to be concluding our 30 days in the book of Mark this week, and I'll be sending out a new invitation to a new Bible study that we can participate together with starting next Sunday. I might find one there to gap the few days that we have between, between the two. But nonetheless, we're going to continue to study the Word of God together, and I look forward to your comments in the comment section. I go back, I read those, I see who's been in there. So I encourage you, if you got a thought or something God drops in your heart, share it with us and with the rest of our community online. Pastors and spiritual leaders are all in agreement. We need a sweeping move of the Holy Spirit now more than ever. We need a fresh outpouring of God's Holy Spirit. And, and, and years ago, Reinhard Bonnke, I don't know if all of you know him or not, one of the greatest evangelists of the 20th century, and he and I were talking one day, and I know some of you are thinking, wait a minute, yeah, um, some of us in here knew Reinhard Bonnke very, very well. And uh, he and I were talking one day, and he said, he was, he was looking at me and he says, we don't need a fresh outpouring, we just need to fan the flame we've already got. He goes, why are you asking for something that you already have? And he and I, we were having lunch, and that was such a remarkable conversation that we have uh, at, that at that point in time. But we need this. Being in the room with God isn't good enough. You need to get to the front row. Now, everybody sitting in the back of the church is looking at me like I'm accusing them of something. It's a metaphor. Don't stop. Anyhow. So anyhow, the, the, uh, uh, but we need to get closer to God. We need to be in the front row, like at your favorite concert. Uh, what, Greg, who did you go see? Casting Crowns, right? You had good seats, didn't you? You wanted to get up close to the front. Were you, was you in the front? Did you get all the way up? No, didn't get that far. We'd be able to do that. Oh, man, I tell you what, it's good whenever you're at your favorite singers and, or, or a theater or whatever, you get up there in front and you get right there, and it's an experience like none other if it's something that you enjoy, and that's what I'm here to tell you. The closer you get to Christ, the more you will enjoy it. The world tell you to be afraid of this, but don't be afraid. Jesus addressed this in Matthew 7. He says, on judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name. We perform many miracles in your name. By the way, this is the reason why I'm doing in the name of Jesus. 
the name of Jesus next month because of this right here because a lot of people use the name of Jesus and don't have a clue what they're doing. And so I want you to be able to know what that means. And he says, I reply back to them, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's law. Here's the deal. A relationship with Christ always trumps our religious work. You can do all the good stuff, but if you don't know Jesus, he doesn't know you. And that is what matters more than anything else. In Luke 10 and and John 12, we see a real-life example of this that Jesus shows us. It's why it's in the Scriptures for this purpose right here. Mary and Martha, they're there in the house. Jesus is teaching. Martha was in the house back in the kitchen, upset Mary wasn't helping her. Mary was out front receiving the tea. And Jesus said she's receiving the food that she came here for, Just because you're back there making bologna sandwiches doesn't mean you shouldn't be, but you should be out here in front here taking care uh, uh, and receiving from me. This is what we're talking about here. Now, we found direction in getting closer to Christ through the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And I lost my place. And forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We love this prayer so many times. And when we look at this prayer, we begin to discover, we, under, we understand, we know that this is what, what Jesus wants us to do. It isn't a prayer like a magic formula. It is a prayer that changes our lives. That was the purpose of the prayer. The purpose of the prayer, Jesus was teaching us how to draw closer to him, how we can make a change in our hearts and in our lives. Number one, your relationship with your creator and king is most important. Your relationship with your creator and king is most important. That is most important. It is more important than any other relationship that you have. It's more important in your marriage relationship. It's more important in your relationship with your kids or anything else. And some people would say, well, pastor, that's a real selfish statement. That's because you're thinking with a small mindset. You think that God only created you to be able to have the capacity only to do so much. God created you with the ability to do so much more. You can love him all you want to and still love your family and still love your friends and still love your kids even more than you can imagine or ask for. Number two, your community of faith deserves the best. Your community of faith deserves your best. They deserve your best. They deserve the best that you can give to them from the kingdom of God. Everybody around you deserves your best word, your best wisdom, your best attitude, your best actions, your best compassion, your best love. And whenever we have that relationship with our Heavenly Father, we are able to do those things. But oftentimes, because we disconnect from God, we try to be a religious person. We think we're doing pretty good, and we're not. And then a lot of people, they had, well, I got a great relationship with God, but I just do not like anybody else. Well, that doesn't work either. (laughs) That relationship really isn't working, is it, if it isn't influencing your community of faith? Now, we love and worship him, and we love each other. Okay, I got three amens. Give me some amens online, okay? Come on. We, we love and worship him, and we love each other. Amen. Amen. The two go hand in hand. You cannot separate one from the other. You can't separate them. You can't do it. That's not my opinion. Understand, it's not my opinion. That's what God said. He said, love one another. As soon as he did that, we were all connected. And now, but I don't want to be connected to that person. You know, I don't think Jesus wanted to be connected to Judas so much either, but he led him in his community of faith. Every once in a while, Peter ticked him off, but he kept him in his community of faith. There was a lot of people that got around Jesus who aggravated him. Some tried to murder him. Some got away with it, but he let them in. And that we are at a place where we realize that if we're going to get closer to Christ, we've got to get closer to each other. 
we love. We pray our Father, not my Father. We pray give us, not give it to me. We pray you are holy, not I deserve it. We pray that God will meet needs, body, soul, and spirit, and we want the Holy Spirit to rule over every part of our lives. That's now. Now we can pray and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now we can pray that. There are some theologians that argue that, get this, that Jesus got it wrong. They said he made a mistake here. That, they, that you should begin with this because you, you, you're always going to enter into his presence as a sinner. And what they don't understand is, is that before you say, For, Lord, forgive me of my sins, forgive us of our debts, our community of faith, before we do any of those things, we got to humble ourselves and get ourselves to a place where we will not only ask for it, but we will receive it too. But pastor, I've already asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins. Do, I, do you mean I have to do this daily? Absolutely, yes, you do. Absolutely. First of all, your prayer of repentance that started your relationship with Jesus Christ isn't enough to maintain your relationship with Jesus Christ. If you want a great relationship, work on it daily. If you want a, a, a relationship that, you know, kind of okay, you can, maybe you can work on it biweekly or three or four times a month. Or you see where I'm going here. The more you put into it, the better it gets. If you want a great relationship with Jesus Christ, invest a great relationship. Invest into it with your life. Now, can we do this from a place of pride and self-sufficiency? Absolutely not. We have to do this from a place of humility and repentance. Why do we have to do that, pastor? Because you're not perfect. No, nobody wanted to admit that one. You're not perfect. You are going to make mistakes. You are going to fail. You're going to mess up. That's true. Oh, you just might as well come on to it. And if you don't think you make any, hang out with us long enough. We'll point them out to you. Hello. Amen. Yeah. Hmm. We have to rely upon his mercy and grace to keep us from having to pay a debt we cannot pay. When we come to a place where we say, Lord, forgive me, it's because we realize there is a debt that is so heavy upon our souls there is nothing that we can say or do outside of Jesus Christ that will pay for that debt. I don't know if you've ever had a large debt forgiven. I have. When somebody calls you up and says, you don't owe me that money, you don't owe me that thing, you don't owe me that. Oh, I mean, how many know? That's just like, whoo, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, set you free, right? Yeah, and that's the attitude that Jesus wants. That's what he says here. Forgive us our debts. Because we owe. We owe big time. We owe because we sin, and our sin is a huge debt that we cannot pay. And only God can forgive you your debt of sin in the same way that a creditor can forgive a debt that you owe them. So whenever we pray, Lord, forgive me, we're not just praying, oh, Lord, I'm sorry that I was a jerk today or anything else. No, Lord, forgive me for this massive debt that I can't do anything about because I was a jerk today. Oh, hallelujah. You might want to pray that prayer by yourself. I get that, but I was a sinner today. I was angry and I sinned. I was, I was selfish. I was prideful. I thought this. I did that. And now I have this debt I can't do anything about. This exposes our pride and we don't like it. Hello? How many of you know that? How many of you know you got a part of yourself that just does not like to admit that you're not perfect? And you're not in control. Oh, more about that in a minute. Hang on. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, each time the Lord said, he said, my grace is all about, is all about my, my grace is all you need. My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. His power works best through your weaknesses. Oh, Lord. So Paul goes around saying, I'm glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. Oh, he boasts about his weaknesses. Now, if there isn't a humbling thing right there, I don't know what is. And in Romans, he tells us that he was a, he was a person who liked things. He liked pretty things. He liked to collect junk. 
How many of you know some people are coveting? They want what somebody else has. Had. That's what he. That's what he said. I like what other people got. I got to And he says I have a problem with that. He admitted that. I don't know anybody in here to admit that. You know, go around and say, yeah, I got a problem with my neighbor. I want his car. I want a bad, you know, and then next thing, uh, it was, you, you can't allow that to happen. I've seen people live that way. First Timothy 1.15, he also wrote, this is a trustworthy saving and everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners and I'm the worst of them all. Paul said, I'm the worst of sinners. You know, we're talking about the Apostle Paul, the great bishop, Paul, who ordered the church, who put it together for us, who made it work, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, and he says, I'm the worst. I'm the worst sinner of them all. Be understood that sin is sin. It doesn't matter. It was a little sin or a big sin or this sin or that sin. He understood he's a sinner. Come on. And he's coming to a place where he says, I admit I mess up. I make mistakes. 1 Corinthians 15, 31, he said, I die daily. Or in other versions, I face death daily. What do you mean? He said, he, he means that we've got to die to ourselves, our arrogance, our rights, our desire to be our own boss, to be in control. We want it our way, and this is the way it's going to be, and I don't get it my way, I'm going to... That's not a person who's dying daily. Okay. How can I do this, Pastor? Well, that's a great question. Very good question if you ask it, ask it. Let me say this first of all. Unforgiveness will always want to be in control. Unforgiveness will always want to be in control. And it will use anger, bitterness, wrath, and a whole host of other things you don't want to have anything to do with in order to accomplish its goal. It's a manipulator. You have to forgive the person you dislike the most. Who is it? Yourself. It's you. Now, some people say, no, pastor, it's not me. Okay, live in denial. Who makes you madder than anybody else? You. Who disappoints you more than anybody else? You. Who keeps a list of every stupid, dumb thing you've ever done since you can remember back to being the age of three? You. You. You do it. And we hang our lives on that and we look at ourselves and we beat ourselves over the head and we say, oh, if I just hadn't have done this, if I hadn't have done that, if... I get it. You have to come to a place where you say, I'm not perfect, Lord. Of course, if the Holy Spirit comes back and says, no, duh. You know, that's, on, that's between you and him. You can talk to him about that, but... You have to come to a place where you say, I'm not perfect. I, 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 need, I don't have this. I ain't got it. I am not in control. I need all the help I can get. I need all the help. Lord, I am dumb as a box of rocks, and I need you. You're sitting there thinking, well, you're just kind of overdoing it here in order to make a point. No, 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 no. This is exactly what you need to be doing. Lord, this rock and I are very similar. We're both facing a situation and neither one of us know what to do about it. Think about that for a second. You are dumb as a rock when you lay facing things in your life. You need Jesus. You need the Holy Spirit to speak to you. You need the Word of God to come alive in your heart. You need people to come alongside of you and say, Thus saith the Lord, here is some wisdom from the Word of God that I could share with you that will make a difference in your life. You need Him at that point in time. Forgive me of my fear, Lord. Forgive me of my hesitation. And maybe you say, man, I got depression, I got anxiety, Jesus, I got ADHD, I got this, I got that, or whatever the case is. Fine, admit it, that's okay. God already knows it. Give it to Him. Let Him do something with that that will give Him glory and honor. Rather than fighting everything in your life, allow Him to touch your heart in life. We're so focused on our body and our image and our mind and what we know and everything else, we forget the spirit. And that's the part of us that says, I ain't got to, I don't have this. I need you. Oh, I need you, Jesus. If, if you're not with me today, we're, it, I'll be there in a minute because I'm going to die because I'm going to do something stupid. I, you know, Jesus is, teaches us Jesus teaches us to forgive our debtors. 
In other words, he wants us, and he wants you, to create a community of forgiveness. That's what it says right there. Let me look at that. Uh, let and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Oops. If you can forgive yourself, you can forgive others. Oftentimes when I find people wrapped up in bitterness, the problem isn't the other person. The problem is themselves. Even your forgiveness is about helping other people find forgiveness. Jesus addressed this in the very next verse right after the Lord's Prayer. And essentially it says, if, the, if, the, if you will forgive other people, God will forgive you. But if you don't forgive other people, God will not forgive you. It's not good, right? So we got to find that place where we offer forgiveness. I talk about this in my podcast. You want to know more about it. I'm not giving anybody license to sin. That's not the point. I'm giving them an opportunity to be forgiven. That's something completely different. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. There's a lot to unpack on this one right here, but here's what I can do with it. Number one, pray. Pray. If you want to stay out of trouble, pray. Amen. You can have all the good, hopeful thoughts you want to, and all you're going to have is good, hopeful thoughts. So it ain't going to change a thing in your life. Prayer changes things. And you need to pray, Lord. I know most people pray this way. Lord, keep the devil away from me. And I have nothing against that prayer, by the way. I have nothing against that whatsoever. But I'm a bigger fan of this prayer. Lord, keep me away from the devil as much as far as possible. Move me. I, I want, get me away from him. No, I don't want to be in, no. I, I may be in a room with God. I may not be close enough, but I don't want to be in a room with him. No, 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 no. Get me out of here. Deliver me. Save me. Everybody's tempted. Galatians 5.18 tells us that we are to be led by the Spirit, not by the flesh. When we're led by the Spirit, guess where He's leading you? Away from trouble. Come on. Away from temptation. And to go back and, and to observe Joseph in the Old Testament, whenever Potiphar's wife was making a pass at him, he ran away from temptation. Of course, it got him in prison. That's a long story. But he did the right thing anyway. 2 Corinthians 10.5 tells us to take every thought captive to get the stinking thinking under control. Every th why, why every thought? I can't get every thought. Pastor, I can't. Why do I have to get every thought? Well, James answered that for you. James 1, 13 through 15 says, and remember, when you are being tempted. So James says right up front, the pastor of the church, he, he says it right up front. You're going to be tempted. So temptation is going to happen. Do not say God is tempting me. God is not going to tempt you to do evil. It may be a test of your faith, but God is not tempting you to do evil. God has never tempted you to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, our thoughts, what's in here, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. And so when we pray, Lord, deliver me. Get me away from Satan. Get me away from this. We're asking, get inside my head and clean this up. Help me, Lord Jesus, to let go of the anger, the unforgiveness, the addictions, whatever the case is, whatever is going up here and, and, and running like a hamster wheel on, on, on drugs. We're, we're in a place where we have got to come to him and say, man, I can't solve this. This is your problem. What do you want me to do? Satan has a plan against you and your family and everybody around you. John 10.10 10 tells you that. And in 2 Corinthians 2.11, Paul tells us that we know what his plans are. There's no secret. It's not like, it's not like we're, we're having to run intel 
We got our own private security agency going in on, on the other side of the enemy lines trying to figure out what to get. There was, listen, he comes to kill and, and steal and destroy what? Everything. Everything. Your mind, your heart, your emotions, your marriage, your finances, your kids, your grandkids, your future, your peace of mind, your hope, your love, your joy, depression, you name it. He wants it dead. Destroyed. And you pray against that. Oh, two people. Well, thank you, Jesus. Anybody online? Let me go see if anybody's online still. Did I lose them all? Let me see if they're still hanging in there with me. Here, hang on a second. I'm going to take a look here real quick. Some of you are thinking, oh, thank you, Jesus. I stayed in here on this one uh, to be able to do that. Wow, we got a, got a nice crowd. That's, that's good. Any amens? Got me any amens in there? You got to come up against the hang on. Hang on. Are you hanging on here? Because I'm about to teach you something. If you don't know this, I'm about to teach you something that's going to change your life. You pray against Satan. And you get after it. And I mean, I want you to take him by the nap of the neck and I want you to show him the door and you evict him out of your life. You evict him out of your marriage. You evict him out of your family. You evict him out of your finances. You get him out and you keep him out. And do not hold back. You tell Satan, Satan, you have no right. You have no authority. You will not get away with it. I am asking heaven to intervene on my behalf to destroy any plan that you have against me. Any weapon formed against me is never going to prosper. You are worthless. You are no good. I do not want you to determine my future of my life, my hope, my ministry, or anything else about me. Get out. Stay out. And I want you to do that every day. I want you to get after it every day. I want you to pray over your kids before they go to school. I want you to pray over each other before you go to work. I want you to pray over your own, your heart, mind, and soul, and spirit and say, no, you have no authority. I'm not going to give it to you. And I'm asking heaven to come down here to earth and do whatever is necessary to set me, my family, my church, my hope, my life, everything free to be able to be ruled and reign by Jesus every day. 2022, I want you to get closer to Christ. And part of that is getting the devil out of the way. Somebody say amen. amen. To be an important part of this community of faith, your uniqueness is welcomed and wanted. Your absence is noted and missed. We live now in the new normal. I don't like new and I don't like normal. Somebody say amen. You understood that. Amen. Yeah. But here we are dealing with it. And I know we got all the, you know, all the rest of the stuff, but... Still, we are people who were built and created by our Heavenly Father to connect to one another. Amen? Amen. If it's got to be digitally, it's digitally. If it's physically, it's physically. But that time that we spend with one another is important, now more important than ever. Hell is not going to win because in 2022, we go on the offensive. Remember, next Sunday is is a big deal. Yeah, okay. No more about that. But the only way this happens is if we start moving closer to Christ. And this is why Jesus concluded the prayer with, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus taught this to us. He lived it out in front of us. He gave his life to empower us to experience it for ourselves. And he stands ready in heaven in order to intercede on our behalf to make it become a reality. But here it is. Here it is. It's his kingdom, not yours. It is his power, not yours. It is his glory. He gets the credit for it, not you, forever and ever. I get to, I said this in the first service. I do not, I cannot imagine us standing around the throne of heaven, looking at the creator of the universe, the savior of our souls, us looking at one another going, good job. You did a good job. Yeah. No, we are not. We're going to be looking at him going, the only reason we're here is because you saved us and we're here to give all the glory to you and you get all the credit for it now and forevermore. When we say amen, which means in Hebrew, so be it. We're not just ending. It's not a period at the end of a sentence. I know somebody say amen. Yeah. It's not, a, it's not a period at the end of a sentence. It's not just something you say whenever the pastor's fired up in the pulpit. What we're saying is this, 
This is the way I want it. So you've prayed this prayer. Our Father, holy is your name. You're the source. It's all about you. I humble myself. Here are my needs. Here's everyone else's needs. I submit to you. Forgive me, God. Keep me away from that one over there. Help me, Lord Jesus. This is all about your kingdom. I want heaven to come down to earth. I want you to be in my heart and my life every day. This is what Jesus was teaching us to pray. And when we get to the end of it and we say amen, we're saying this is the way I want it. I want your will. I, this is what I want, God. I want you to do this in my heart, in my life, my family, my marriage, my future. This is the way I want it to be. And his grace and his power will become a reality in your life when you do this. Is that your heart's desire right now, today? Is that what you want more than anything else? Age does not matter. Experience does not matter. Your level of spirituality does not matter. You matter. That's what matters. That's what this is all about. I know we're praying about what God wants us to do, but God sees us and he sees you. And he knows that you are an important part of everything that he does. And we rest in that. And we enjoy that moment. Everyone here, stand with me, if you would, please, as the ushers begin to offer communion. And for those of you online, if you have those emblems, you're more than welcome to join along here with us for us to have here today. And my question that I want to close with here in a few moments is this. Are you close enough to Christ today? Are you close enough to Christ right now? Okay? Now, at one level, everybody says no. No, we're not close enough. Not close enough. I know that. I get that. We can always draw closer. It's always going to be that way, by the way. We're always going to be getting, growing closer and closer and closer to Him as we get farther and farther away from this world. But at the purpose of my question is this. Have you been doing all that you can and then some to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ? Have you been doing everything that you can and then some to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ? Yes, I would love one. Thank you. I have to ask myself that every day, all the time. Lord, where am I at today? All that matters is today. Tomorrow's got enough problems of its own. Somebody say amen. I can sit here and worry about my daughter going to go get an x-ray on her foot tomorrow. It's going to happen either way. I'm not going to go to the results of that until a doctor gets a hold of it and says, yay, yay, nay, nay. I don't know what's going to happen. But in this moment, Jesus is Lord. And because of this moment, I know in that moment, Jesus will still be Lord doesn't matter what the doctor says, Jesus is Lord. And I have to work at being close enough for that to happen every day. I know that for a lot of you in here, you think you're broken beyond repair. A marriage, a heart, a life, emotions, finances, whatever. I'm broken beyond repair. I'm broken beyond this. I'm broken beyond that. I can't fix this. I can't fix that. And we worry about what is broken. We worry about what's broken. Hang on. For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself on the night that Jesus was betrayed. Jesus took some bread and he gave thanks to it and he broke it into pieces. And he said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, usually two wrong, two, two negatives don't make a positive. I get that. But your broken life plus his broken body equals healing, deliverance, restoration, a future, a life. Take that which is broken and give it to him and his body which was broken and that's enough that's enough 
Lord, I pray your blessing upon this bread. We want to draw closer to you when we know that your body was given for that purpose. I pray right now that we give thanks for what you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone said, let's receive the bread together. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it, for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you're announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. This is an agreement. This is a contract. This is an agreement. This is you saying, I agree with the word of God. I agree with the words of Jesus. I agree with the promises of God. I agree with the kingdom of heaven. I agree with his will to be done. I agree that he can do something about my life. I agree that he will do something about my life. I, do you see where I'm going with this? Jesus gave his blood so that you could say, I agree, Lord, that I am a sinner and I need grace and forgiveness. I agree. Forgive me my debts as I forgive my debtors. I agree that you will not, you will do whatever it takes to keep me from temptation and you will deliver me from evil. I agree that my community of faith today is here together to worship you. I agree that your name is holy above all other names, above the name of grief and cancer, of loss or broken bones or anything else, that your name is the greatest name of them all. And you are the source of my life, the joy. You are the fountain that I go to to find everything that I need. I agree that your blood was shed upon a cross so that your words may be true and that you will never leave me. You will never forsake me. You will give me a home in heaven and I will be with you forever and ever worshiping you with all of my heart, soul, and spirit. I, I am here today to agree with you, God. I agree. I agree. And Lord, we agree together as we worship you. We thank you for dying on a cross. We thank you for rising from the dead three days later. We praise you for ascending to the right hand of the Father. We praise you for listening to our words and prayers right now. We thank you for being our Savior, King, and Lord, now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, so be it. Let us receive the cup. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We give praise to him now. We gave praise online. If those of you online, take a moment and just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our hearts and in our lives. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. The podcast after the sermon talks a lot about today's message. If you got a question, type it into the chat there online. Send it to us. Email me. If you're on the YouVersion app, there's a place you can click and you can get a hold of me directly on Facebook Messenger if you want. But I want us to continue to honor God with our hearts and with our lives. Amen? And we continue to be in the Word together and we continue to pray together and we continue to keep moving closer and closer to Christ. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you peace. God bless.